Hi, I'm David Ireland, the Wildlife Man. Welcome to episode number 11 of the Wildlife Man podcast. Now today's story is sponsored by Kess Gallery. They have the most amazing aerial photography of the Sydney region. Now today's story is titled Burning Mountain. Now there are places on our planet which can cause uncontrollable anxiety and fear, where massive loss of life can occur, and that's volcanoes. If we look back in time at Krakatoa in Indonesia, 36,000 people lost their lives. Tambora volcano in Indonesia, 92,000 people lost their lives. And only recently at Mount White in New Zealand, people died from an eruption. And some of those people are still missing. Most of my life I've produced wildlife documentaries, but I am very much a photographer still photos and video. And I've worked for many different organisations over the years. National Geographic, Smithsonian Institute, museums, and even charities that support wildlife conservation. Filming a huge diversity of animal life and locations. And one of the gigs that I had years ago was to film an active volcano a volcano in Vanuatu, Tanner Island, called Yasu Volcano. And this volcano has been active for something like 800 years. And my job was to film it. And I did achieve insane, amazing footage. And a lot of it was published in the World Encyclopedia, DVDs and CD-ROMs and whatever. But I also came this close to losing my life. So now here is the story about my adventure, my filming of an active volcano in Vanuatu. When I first arrived at Tanner Island, it was rather frightening because it's like a moonscape. It's just all this volcanic dust. It's like dirty baby powder. And I hired a guide to take me to the top of the crater of this volcano. And it was currently rated at around two. They have different levels of danger, if you like. And at level two, it was possible to get up to the crater and actually look down into the crater and film it. It meant that it wasn't going nuts with violent eruptions. But of course, that can change in a heartbeat. And it did that day. As we travelled towards the volcano itself, I think we bogged the truck about four times. Now, sure, we got it out because this dust, volcanic dust is so, so sticky and muddy and horrible stuff to try and drive a four-wheel drive through, especially in monsoon rains when it gets wet. And what worried me was If this thing goes up and we have to get away from it quickly, what happens if we bog the bloody truck? So I wasn't real happy that we're bogging the truck just getting there because I thought there's a good chance we're going to bog the the truck getting away. When we got to the, the lower reaches of the volcano itself and we looked up thousands of feet and you could just see smoke pouring out, nothing real crazy, and we started up 
a very rough track up the side of this mountain, this volcano. And we didn't travel far before we encountered vents and steam coming out of them. I mean, what is a volcano? A volcano is a crack, a vent, a crater uh, in the Earth's crust. And where you have superheated, incredibly high pressure gases just causing horrific eruptions and pushing lava, toxic gas and volcanic dust with such force that it can be, it can send clouds of volcanic dust thousands of feet into the air. It can spew out lava that just flows across the earth, killing everything in its path. And also clouds of toxic sulfuric acid hydrogen gas. They can be heated to incredible temperatures. And it can tumble down like this big cloud of death at 50 miles an hour and wipe out so many people. That's a volcano. And here we were driving up it in an old four-wheel drive truck on Tanner Island in Vanuatu. We went round a few vents and even the vents you worry about because they can open up. And as we got nearer the top of the crater itself, it was like a step where it flattened out, then it went again. And there we stopped because it was too steep to go on in the truck. We had to walk. I had three video cameras, tripods. I wanted footage of me talking to camera and also footage of the eruptions or whatever was going on. That was what my client wanted. And I had just this one native guy as a guide that would help. But what concerned me was what I could see on the ground, not far from the truck, and still maybe 200 yards from the summit were smouldering rocks this size, some of them this size, some of them the size of golf balls, still smouldering. And what were they? They were lava bombs where the volcano has erupted and thrown lava rocks, white hot, hundreds of feet, thousands of feet into the air, and they've landed around the perimeter of the volcano. Hundreds of metres from the actual crater. You would only need one the size of a golf ball to hit you, it'd go through your body like butter. And then you could feel the anxiety start to really take over. You could feel it and it was hard to control because then there was some eruptions. And it sounded like thunder and a mixture of thunder and also like a huge wave breaking really close to you. And the whole mountain shakes. Just boom, this huge noise, like whoa, and then the whole thing shakes. And you're like, and you realize that you're just a tiny speck of life on this, this volcano, that it can take you out like that. And it's hard not to just turn around and run. And we kept going. And the thunder, the shaking just continued. And then it would stop, be dead still. And then it would happen again. And finally we arrived 
on the edge of the crater and I'm looking down into this cauldron of weird gas just moving. and It's like some sort of living thing. If you can imagine if there's a hell, we were looking into it. It is such a frightening thing to see, to look down into an active volcano. To think that's what's below us, that's what's under the Earth's crust. Like, God, it's a real wake-up call when you look down into that. This beautiful green planet we live on, but what's under it? Wow, amazing. And we wanted to stay there until night, because at night time, you'd get all the colour of the eruptions. And hour after hour we stayed and we filmed. And then after a while the eruptions started to become a little bit more violent and more gas started coming out of that crater. And it was there was obviously a lot of sulphur in it, sulfuric acid. You know, when these gases come out of volcanoes, and if they come out in huge quantities, huge volumes of gas, they can come back down as acid rain. How frightening is that? Acid rain. Rain that just burns the skin off your body. My God. But the wind was blowing from behind us. So what gas was coming out, and you could see it was this yellowy, sulfuric, smelly, horrible stuff coming out and just going off to the north. <coughs> So we were okay. We couldn't breathe that. No way you could breathe it. But the wind was constant. So we were okay. It was going that way. So we kept filming. And then it got darker. And the eruption started to get more intense. And the shaking. And you couldn't help... Every time there was an explosion, <clears throat> you couldn't predict it. So I'm filming, and then when it would go off, you'd, you'd shake. And there was also this huge pressure wave. Almost blow you off the mountain, this pressure wave. Just insane. You know what's happened if you're, if you're on the side of a road, a big semi-trailer comes past really quick, and the pressure wave, wow, what's that? It was like that, but ten times worse. So not only do you get the sound of this thing, you also feel the pressure wave and it frightens you. But I wanted to film and get the best footage I can. So we stayed and it started going into the night and the eruption started to occur more frequently and more violently. And I was getting the most insane footage, just lava coming up, incredible colours. You could even see the pressure waves in the footage that I was filming. And I'm talking the camera. I had a mask on, like a thing around my face. And then the air started to become toxic. A lot more ash falling on us, sulfuric gases, hydrogen gases, and I'm an asthmatic. I can't handle sulphur. If I have a dried apricot that's been sulphur dried, I'll get asthma in seconds. I can't breathe. So I'm starting to cough and I'm having breathing problems. I can hardly breathe. And it's all in the film. Eventually it got really bad. We got fantastic footage, but we had to go because these bombs, these lava bombs were being thrown up hundreds of feet in the air and they were landing behind us. One of them nearly hit the truck. So we ran. We ran to that truck. By the time we got to the truck, I was having so much trouble breathing and so was my guide. We jumped in the truck. We only got 100 yards and, of course, we bogged that bloody truck on the mountain. We're trying to dig it out, trying to keep going. It took us something like two hours to get off that mountain. 
and I spent nearly eight days in a little beach hut on Tanner Island, violently ill. It took eight days for my lungs to come good. We came this close to dying. I don't want to ever go back and film volcanoes. But I'm glad I did because it was an incredible experience. And it made me realise just how precious our life is and how fragile we are and why every breath that we take as a human living on this beautiful planet We should make the most of it. We should appreciate every single day that we're alive because we are very, very fragile. Hi, I'm David Ireland, the wildlife man. I'm on Tanner Island, a remote island in Vanuatu. Behind me is Yasu Volcano, an active volcano. And currently it's graded at three, which means it is highly active. We're going to try and get up the side of this very steep mountain and get some footage of the eruptions. It will be amazing, but also dangerous. Just getting to this uh, this volcano is an adventure in itself. We have to cross this um, volcanic ash plain, and now we're about to try and fall drive across a river. And it's been dry, raining pretty heavily, so it's not going to be easy. And above us is this massive active volcano. Oh my God! Have a look at this. He's the man. He's going to get us back alive, aren't you, Dave? Yeah. Come back home somewhere on now. Now we're about halfway up the mountain, up the volcano. We're starting to see vents just steaming from each side of our track. You can see this uh, really hot gases, toxic gases coming out of the earth. Alright, we start to walk up to the edge of the crater of Yasu Volcano. You can see all the rocks behind me, what they call the bombs. Lava that's been ejected during an eruption. And the eruptions occur here almost all the time. And these boulders they call bombs are thrown thousands of meters into the air and we're getting closer and we start to hear this volcano rumble and you can feel the ground shake okay Okay, I'm on the edge of the, the crater Now Yosa is is a scoria type volcano, steep sides with a huge crater. And this vent drops down deep into the earth, into a magma chamber that stores all the eruptive materials, molten lava and gases. And the heat builds up, enormous pressure, and then you get the eruption. It's getting hard to breathe up here because so much volcanic ash continually falling and the smell of the the gases coming out of this active volcano. It is truly a scary place. 
scary place. Now the wind has uh, turned against us and we're getting all the gas and we can hardly see it all. The problem is we can't see when lava or bombs, rocks thrown right up in the air from an eruption, we can't see where they're landing. So I'm hoping this, the wind starts changing and we can see what's going on. Gee, that's frightening, isn't it? What I want to try and do is just stay here until it gets dark. And then you'll see a light show that you won't believe. Providing we don't suffocate. It's now 20 past four. We've got about 50 minutes before it gets dark. And then we can see all the lava and fire coming out of this amazing active volcano. Every week, we will publish a new Wildlife Man podcast. So, if you enjoy, please subscribe. Please share, like, and ring that notification button so you never miss a new story being published. And remember, all my films are available streaming on demand from Vimeo. So that's it from me till next week. I am your Wildlife Man. <laughs>